Hello gang, today we're going to be discussing the three, the two stimuli and the three systems that are involved that receive stimuli that don't go away. They're constantly there. I'm Dr. Roger Elmer and I'm a chiropractor. I'm a board certified uh, neurologist, a diplomate with the American Board of Chiropractic Neurology and I'm a fellow in the International Chiropractic Scoliosis Board. And today what I want to discuss is those stimuli and how they affect not only the brain but the entire body. There are two stimuli that never go away. Those stimuli are number one, breathing. Breathing does not go away unless you die and then we don't have to worry about it ever again. So breathing. Okay, and then the next one is the effects of gravity, which we're going to combine, we're going to break down into two parts. We're going to break it down into two parts. One is gravity's effect on the graviceptors, the receivers of information from gravity in your head. We call it the tonic labyrinthine input. Those are the receptors in your head, particularly the utricle and saccule, because those calcium carbonate crystals receive the effects of gravity that pull down on them, and it's a constant state. No matter what position you're in, they are being pulled on, and when they're being pulled on, they are sending signals to the nervous system about where you are, where your head is in space. And so, because gravity doesn't ever go away, it's having that constant effect. Now, if you're in water, it's dampened significantly and that but just letting you know that this is this is one of those effects of gravity that does not go away and we're going to talk about why that's so important the other part of gravity is the effects on the muscle stretch receptors muscle spinal fibers, but we're going to also include in that any effects that might be from gravity that, re that relate to the tendons, the Golgi tendon organs, but also any stretch that it's created, but also the effects on the joints themselves, the mechanoreceptors, whether they're tensile, receive tensile stretching loads or compressive, those are the effects that, re those are the sensors that receive the graviceptive input. The gravity is pulling down on it and creating an effect. Now, why is this so important and why is it so valuable to us? Because that is the basic input that constantly has an effect on our brains. Whether it's the brain stem, or we've already talked about the brain in terms of the, the, the spinal cord and the brain stem being the, like the car. It's got all the things to make things work. It, the car can operate, in fact, if you put a remote in it, you could drive it without a driver. But then the brain is a three-tiered brain, uh, and we've discussed that being the, the basal ganglia, the, the, the lowest level, the reflexive system, then the, the part of the brain that relates to emotion or the limbic brain, which includes the hypothalamus, which extends into the, the hormonal part of the system, and also the neocortex, which is the, the upper part. And so all those three parts all, all of the nervous system receives impact from gravity and from breathing all the time. As you breathe in and out, bre breathing is intended to be a whole body experience. And you are moving joints, you are expanding and contraction, contracting, causing muscles to receive input, causing joints to receive input, or to, to drive input into the brain stem, cerebellum, and even into the brain. And so, the, it is the basic underlying drive of the brain, and it keeps all and it causes 
all the other aspects of the brain to function at higher levels. When those go down, like let's say you wind up in a coma for a while, or let's say uh, I do something mean and I wind up in solitary confinement and, and they put me in a dark place for, for six or eight months, when I come out I can still see, I can still hear. Why? Because that underlying drive, gravity and breathing, have kept the overall system alive. Now I've dialed significantly down, but that is keeping me basically alive and the brain functions the entire body. If we were to take you and put you in a rubber suit and, and submerse you in water where you can breathe, but make it so you can't see, you can't hear, you can't smell, you can't taste, and you can't feel, put rubberized stuff on you where you can't feel, and, and cause you to not experience gravity at all, within two hours you'd be insane and within 24 hours you'd be dead. Because that basic drive of the system is what is the profound underlying drive of the brain and drives the entire system but also gives its impact to the rest of the nervous system. When those systems go down in any way, your vision can go down. It can be dulled, dampened in its effect. And so this is why we're so, so very excited about these inputs, right? The vestibular system, the, the system that gives us pa uh, balance and posture and gait, the system that receives all that information is the basic drive of the, of the brain, your breathing mechanism. And the reason we are so excited about it with respect to not just functional neurology, but to, to Pettibon's system itself is, why? Because we are the world reigning heavy ch heavyweight champions of optimizing the effects of gravity on the nervous system and therefore on the body. When we create when we take somebody who's broken down in their structure and re reform that system so that it has the curve system, the curves, when we look at it from the side, the sagittal curves, so that it is a spring mechanism, right, as, as Dr. Pettibon said, preloaded and post-stressed so that it has that optimum effect like a suspension spring, up and down. And so, and can, does that look like breathing? Yes. <sighs> breathing is optimized via everything that we do. We are the masters of putting together that breathing mechanism in every way, including get the head back over the center of the body. Rene Callier said that uh, the, uh, the, uh, when, the when, you, when the head is forward, you decrease vital capacity by 30%. Oh man, you got a breathing problem? And we take the mechanism and improve it by 30%. Let's say you've got asthma or COPD or whatever. Well, you've got a problem with breathing because of something that's on the inside, but also anything that makes your mechanism not work very well makes it difficult to breathe. And so we put that system back together. We're making it so that it optimizes the inputs from breathing front to back and side to side evenly so that we're often optimizing the effects of that breathing system. Also, the same way for, for the gravity receptive system. The optimum position for the head is with the, with the eyes forward, with the head being back, and the head centered over the center of the body, over the center of the pelvis, over the front of the ankles, and, and being equal side to side, with straight up and down from the side with that curve system. That allows us to optimally receive the effects of gravity otolithically from a, from a saccular and utrical point of view, which is the feelings of forward, back, side to side, up, down, those, those effects on, on that system, the tonic labyrinthine system, the effects on the muscle spindle fibers, on the, on the Golgi tendon organs and on the, the, uh, the uh, uh, joint mechanoreceptors that receive stretch and compression, the uh, optimum bilateral front to back, side to side uh, effect of optimally utilizing the effect that we have from gravity every day to optimize our brains. And that is what we do in the Pettibon system. We put that system back together and get it to be as close to perfect as possible. And then when we release the patient, they have a retainer that allows them to take care of themselves, either to maintain it or to optimize it. If they're, if they're doing it every day, once a day, they're actually optimizing it. If they do it once a week, they're maintaining themselves against the effects of gravity that would pull their system apart and cause them to suboptimally utilize 
the effects of gravity and the effects of breathing. And so that's why I'm so excited being, being not only for the last 17 years working with the Pedabon system and working and modifying it and, and that uh, affecting the sagittal plane first and all of that, but also being a board certified uh, chiropractic neurologist and functional neurologist, being able to put that system back together so that it receives the greatest amount of optimization so that gravity has the greatest uh, help to the entire brain and, and nervous system and, and nervous system and the body and so that's uh, in a nutshell uh, we'll we'll go over a longer version to break some of those things down and diagram some of those pathways for you but I wanted to get that out there for you and I hope you're as excited as I am uh, probably not but I hope so and, and I hope you enjoy it thanks bye